Bro Sanchez TV on YouTube. Why do we see the sun and the moon out at the same time? Tell me, bro. What's up, Facebook and YouTube? Welcome back, y'all. Today, we're going to be talking about lunar eclipses and full moons. We're going to be basically talking about the phenomena of seeing the sun and moon out at the same time. I know many of you see that a lot, and you say, how is that possible? Well, I'm going to show you why that's possible and exactly what's going on. The reason we ask these questions is because the theories we've been given from NASA makes no sense on the globe model. But I after this video, uh, this phenomena will be explained in detail in a way that you will understand it. So understand, first of all, that the moon is its own light source, okay? One of the biggest lies we've been taught since we were children is that the sunlight is what gives the moon its light. Well, I proved that wrong in previous videos, and also many other people have proved that wrong, okay? Because the moon doesn't get its light from the sun. Just real quick to tell you why it don't is because moonlight is silver and cold and sunlight is warm and reddish orange so there's a difference between these light sources if the moonlight was being reflected from the sun it wouldn't be cold all right it's actually cold okay and uh, another thing you need to realize is that there have been plenty of times where the moon and sun have been seen facing directly across from each other and the moon was not full so think about that that proves that the moon it's its own projection. It's its own light source. Now, these celestial beings were called luminaries by the ancients, and they behave more like translucent discs rather than solid spheres. Now, after the day, you're going to see why I say that. And keep in mind that there are plenty of footage out there that people have where we see stars through the moon. What did it say? Hi, right, Blue Fox here. You can't On September see through a ball? 2015, I took pictures of the eclipse of the moon. I set up my 5-inch telescope using a 17-millimeter eyepiece and took these snapshots. You will notice in the pictures, stars show through the dark part portions of the moon. And as I go through them, I'll blow them up a little larger so you can see these stars. I'll point to one, there's a blue star here, a white star, there's another star right here, that shows up quite good, and uh, that's that picture, move on to the next one, you can actually see the stars here, now we'll zoom in and we'll see a red star with a white star right in here, and then there's three stars, a white star, a blue star, and another blue star. And there's a white star pretty much over here. Okay, now this one here, you can see the stars. One, two, that's pretty bright. Now zoom in on it. Now there's a red star, white star, showing through the uh, moon, white star, and then blue star again. Okay, and also keep in mind what I said, that we also have wow. footage of the sun and moon directly in front of each other. Now where the moon should be lit up by all of that sunlight, but yet it's not, okay? So that cancels out NASA's theories. Now that's important to keep in mind as we get on with this lunar eclipses and understanding how we can see them both out during the day and actually how we've been deceived as well. So we're going to compare this stuff to the ancient cosmology 
cosmology and also to what NASA said. So let's look into this lunar eclipse thing and also this full moon thing right quick. And to understand it, let's just start with our current understanding according to what NASA say. So I'm just going to read to you how they explain this situation. So understanding the full moon. What makes a full moon look full? At full moon, the moon and sun are on a line with Earth in between. Keep that in mind. I want y'all to really keep that in mind because it say at full moon, the moon and sun are on a line. In other words, the sun, moon, and earth are lined up, but the earth is in between. This is what they say is why we see full moons, okay? Now let's keep reading. It's as though Earth is the fulcrum of a seesaw and the moon and sun are sitting on either end of the seesaw. So as the sun sets in the west, the full moon rises. When the sun is below our feet at midnight, the full moon is high as in the sky. When the sun rises again at dawn, the full moon is setting a bunch of baloney, if you ask me. Because first of all, they just said at full moon, the moon and sun are on a line with the earth in between. Now keep that in mind. I'm going to show y'all why this is a bunch of baloney. Now the reason that's a bunch of baloney, because if you think about that, what they said is that that's the reason we have a full moon. It's because sun, moon, and earth lined up with the earth in between. Now that's what they say is why we have a full moon. But guess what? That's the same thing they say for why we have a lunar eclipse also. How can it be both? That means every time we see a full moon we should see a lunar eclipse according to them and i'm gonna show y'all what's going on and why this is such a confusion but they know y'all ain't gonna look into it as deep as i'm showing you here so keep this stuff in mind now that they said that the full moon is because earth sun moon is aligned with the earth in between but they also say this is why we have lunar eclipses but we don't see a lunar eclipse every time there's a full moon. So once again, we're being deceived. Now I'm going to show you some pictures of how they say this thing work out. And uh, this will get y'all to see what I'm talking about here. So if you look at this when it says, when the moon is full, the earth, moon, and sun are lined up with the earth between the moon and sun. Basically what I just told y'all. Now I say, from earth we see only the lighted side of the moon and observe the moon rising near sunset. Now people, I want y'all to lock this diagram in your head okay because it say at the bottom here in blue it say a lunar eclipse occurs when the earth blocks sunlight and cast a shadow on the moon now people let me explain something to you according to all of this every time this alignment happened we should see a lunar eclipse every time the earth is in between the sun and moon shouldn't the earth always block the sunlight people this rule will always apply when will it not apply Anytime you put an object in front of an object, it's going to block the light. We're going to look at this diagram, and we see that we're being bamboozled here. And the reason they're able to do it is because we're not questioning it. We're not looking into it deeply. Now, Maybe look not. at this diagram. Maybe look not. at the sun on the right. You see its light is hitting this side of the earth. Okay, that makes sense. And then you see that the earth has a dark side behind it, all right, because the light of the sun is not hitting that side. That's understandable. But what's not understandable is when we get to the moon, how in the world does the moon have any light on it? Now, if the earth is bigger than the moon, like they say, why in the world is the moon got any light on it? The moon should be completely in darkness, according to this diagram. It makes no sense, people. Now, let me show you how this would work on an experiment. It's real simple, people. Again, I'm not going to complicate this stuff. As you can see, Above me is the sun. Okay, that's our sun in the sky. That's going to be our light source. That's the first part of the diagram. Remember that, that the sunlight was hitting the earth, okay? So here's our sun above our head. The rock in my hand represents the earth. And you see the sunlight is lighting this side up, but this side isn't getting any light. So the earth is bigger than our moon right here okay and it may be a little bit smaller but this is a good example so if the sun is hitting the earth and the earth is directly in front of the moon like they say that's a lunar eclipse what they also say but what we notice is that during a lunar eclipse okay the moon becomes completely blotted out like we see here 
So why then is there a full moon and a sun out during the day? It doesn't make sense. If the sun is directly in front of the moon and the earth is in between it as they show us, why is the moon lit? Shouldn't the moon be darkened out like this? So this is very strange and it's something we need to look into because if the full moon is out and the earth is supposed to be in the middle of this moon and the sun but yet this moon is bright and full with the earth in the middle something's going on here because this shadow should be blocking that moon out if it's directly in the middle as that diagram shows but now i'm gonna show y'all what's really going on here in a minute but let's let's move on So before we move on to the next model, let's just look at this model again and think about what I just showed you outside. Again, your sun on the right is your light source, okay? It's reasonable that we ha should have that side of the earth lit and the back side of the earth should, should have a shadow. That's understandable. But when we move over here to the moon, the moon should not be getting any light. If the Earth Don't is give in the her center light. directly in between uh, the sun and moon, okay? Now, later, I'm going to make videos in the future explaining more about this lunar eclipse because the lunar eclipse is not what they've been telling us, okay? And I'm going to get deep into that. But right now, I just want to focus on this sun and moon in the sky at the same time. So, like I said, this diagram is baloney. That moon should not be getting any light. And as we move on, you'll see more what I'm talking about. So, as we move to this next one it's pretty much the same thing uh but it's some more stuff i want to point out this one here shows basically the same thing we just said you can see that uh if we take out everything in the middle and just look at the sun the earth and the moon and their alignment straight across the middle we'll see the same thing acted out we can see that the sun shines on the uh face of the moon here and that that will appear to be the uh earth shadow giving you the eclipse and you can see if you do that in reverse then you get your full moon like they saying so depending on which area the alignment is whether the moon is between the earth and the sun or whether the earth is between the sun and the moon and i'm gonna show y'all what's really going on here because it's not that the earth is in between the sun and the moon the sun and the moon is revolving above the earth plane and as i get into this video you're gonna see what i'm saying now in the top left of this photo you can see where they said that's the far side of the moon that we can't see which is baloney that's all photoshop and i'll be getting into this whole dark side of the moon deception that's a whole other video is so much people i just wanted to show y'all this thing on another level with this graph in front of you let's go to the next one and it's pretty much the same thing i just want to get this in your head before we move on you see how the sunlight is hitting the earth but yet when we get to the moon the moon is still lit people the moon should not be getting any light i just demonstrated that outside that would be what's called an eclipse okay where we blot out the moon but we can prove that the moon is its own light source that's independent of the sun and this is what the bible and all the ancient ancestors said they said that the sun and moon were equal luminaries and that god created them equal that the whole yin yang symbol is the sun and the moon and you can see it's equal both of those people yeah like when they came to the moon it's nothing like when you see that purple cloud and then that orange and yellow ring around it. It's just like all clear. You can see the moon. It's just a silver ring when they chemtrail the moon. Like they be chemtrailing the full moon, right? have the same amount of space but they're just different polarities like i said a moon is a lighter light and the sun is the bright light but they're both equal okay you need that lighter light that's the essence of night so night ain't really darkness it's just a lesser light you always getting light on this earth plane the sun and moon are equal luminaries that's revolving above a stationary flat earth and as we can see right now i'm disproving what nasa saying because the moon shouldn't be getting any any light and as you can see in this final clip that we're going to use it's the same thing okay he so you can see flat here earth. From, i hope you're still living left to right the sunlight shines on the earth and since the earth is so big as 
as you can see on this image right here, the moon is, is blotted out. So this would be the anatomy of a lunar eclipse, what they're showing you, all right? But what I'm saying is this right here has happened plenty of times, and the moon has been full with no shadows, and there hasn't been any lunar eclipses every time this phenomena so-called happened. So they're playing with our mind. They're making us see our reality in a confusing way that we kind of understand it, but we still scratching our head and we just accept the theories. So now all I've been showing you so far is the mumbo jumbo what NASA give us that makes no sense. Now we're going to move into how this thing really work and prove to you how you are on a flat earth based on all of these experiences we, we see in our reality. Now this is a panoramic view of your flat earth plane from 18 miles high, okay? Now what we want to point out before we get into this is that the curvature you see is from the lens, okay? The people who submitted this, I have the link in the description box, you can go to the original. They stated in the video that the curvature is only from the lens, and I explained to y'all how that worked in previous videos. That's how NASA been deceiving us with these bogus lenses. So as we look at this, just ignore the bogus curvature uh it's just shot with that fish eye camera or whatever they call it with the gopro technology now i want you to pay attention to this panoramic view what happens is these people launch balloons up and when they get up to a certain high they start spinning around in a rotation so we can get a full view now as this thing spin around what you're gonna see is it's near the area of the sun one thing you need to realize a couple of things we want to point out with this footage is that if you look at the sun on this thing there's no way possible that sun can be 93 million miles away. Look at it, people. That cannot be 93 million miles away. It just can't, people. Look at the angles from the light. Now, I got to tell you how the light angles from that sun give away its distance for real. Those light angles really give it away. And so many people throughout the years, including the ancients, have looked at those light angles as proof that the sun is very close. So we got to keep that in mind. Now, the sizes and distances of the sun and moon fits perfectly with the yin-yang model. Now, like I said, the yin-yang model is the sun and moon circuits depicted by the ancient Chinese or the ancient Asians. This was their model of the sun and moon circuit, and they spin around in this spiral that we call the yin-yang, and this balance. Okay, there's balance, 12 hours, night, 12 hours, day. And the sizes of them are relatively the same. Me personally, I believe that the sun and the moon are equal sizes and that there is balance. Now, this circular pattern that we're talking about, some believe also that it's not just a flat pattern some believe that the sun and moon while they're circling they actually go up and down and change their heights at certain Summer. times too that can be true too i wouldn't doubt it okay Closer. so like i said the sun and moon Winter. behave more like Farther. light orbs like beings celestial beings okay they know what they're doing they're conscious of themselves nasa gives us a sun and moon that isn't conscious that's stuck by the remnants of an explosion so understand that the cosmos Cosmology NASA gives us all of the movement in it is based on what happened from a previous explosion. So everything is moving from the previous chaos. But the cosmos, the ancients gives us everything is moving based that on the disgusting. hand of the most high not from no chaotic explosion and you, you just still move and spread now that separate. thing looks like a disease that is not where movement come from of these celestial beings we cannot keep excluding the most high people the most high is controlling these celestial beings now let's move on and as we look at this panoramic view some more things we want to point out is that if you look at the picture you can see the moon right across from the sun just like the ancestor said and if you look at this model right here it show you exactly what you're seeing in this panoramic view okay on a globe earth we should not be seeing the sun and moon right across from each other 18 miles high it'll be impossible on a globe earth people you got to understand that and i'm gonna show you why when we move on everything you're seeing in this panoramic footage supports our ancestors model and this is real footage not the fake stuff nasa give you 
this should not be on a globe. You should not see the sun and moon directly across from each other as we spin this camera around if we were on a globe. And there's no way these objects are these millions of miles away. They're right above our heads creating the day and night and the creator is in charge. Now people think that the sun is setting above the horizon. I got a real good video coming out to this one. So stay tuned Where's talking about the way we see the sunset and what really happened. I didn't want to crumb them all together so stay tuned for that all right now with this panoramic view footage it proves we ain't on a globe okay there's no way you should see the sun and moon across from each other on a globe you gotta really think about it people how are we able to see the sun and moon both out directly across from each other if we on a globe think about it if you're on a globe you're gonna see the sun or the moon that's why people asking these questions that's why people say why are we seeing the sun and moon out together and people make up all kind of fairy tale stories and say because we in the end of days and all of that stuff but they ignore the physics you ignore your own senses when you do that why is the sun and moon out directly across from each other in our sky if we're on a globe on a globe your perspective from any point on a globe is gonna be either the sun or the moon wherever they are in relation to where you are on the globe or whether it's night or day in your area and in other words what i'm saying is how can the moon and sun both be out in our sky during a daytime moment and people on the other side of the so-called globe still experiencing their nighttime with the moon in their sky and we only have one moon now so we're seeing during the daytime the sun and moon both high in the sky and like i said how can the moon be in two places at one time so how can the moon be in your daytime sky with the sun and someone else is getting nighttime with the moon in their sky too on the whole opposite side of the so-called globe it doesn't make sense you cannot see the sun and moon out at the same time if you were on a globe people because the sun and moon will always be on either side of that globe to the point where you wouldn't be able to see them together unless the earth was to go down and we looking up at the sun and the moon so if the earth was a globe and we pushed it down and moved the sun and the moon up some then yeah we can see them both together but we know that ain't the case according to this chaotic solar system they give us this thing is beautiful that we see in our reality with the sun and the moon and how they make their celestial circuits it's just the way the ancestors describe and it's beautiful we ignore our senses and accept all of that chaos nasa give us and it don't even make no sense think about what Except i said it, it don't make no sense the word is sense the reason it don't make no sense to you people is because you're ignoring your senses when you ignore your senses nothing is gonna make sense to you but we live in a world where people don't care if it makes sense or not. We're just comfortable with going along with the norm and the lies that we've been given. Now, like I said, the only way you can see the sun and the moon both in the sky is if the earth was to either stoop down or both of them rise up above the earth so we can see them both. But according to the model they give us, we can't have this phenomena because the earth would be in between the sun and the moon. And based on where you at, you would be able to see just either or. You wouldn't be able to see them both now that'll get into the lunar eclipse thing where they said when the earth turned a certain way now we see the shadow of it this proves we're on a globe no it does not and i got another video coming deep about the lunar eclipse after this one but let's focus on this situation right now some more keep this in mind we should not be seeing the sun and moon across from each other if we're on a globe this proves that we're on a flat earth all right now let's move on so now that we saw that panoramic footage we know we've been bamboo it all right everything in our reality is just the way the ancients describe it it's just the way all the religious texts say and if you look at the bible the bible tell you all of this stuff but they done away with the old testament when they did the new testament so understand that the reason they got everybody out of the old testament was to do away with the law and the real law was the cosmology all right this stuff that the ancients left behind about our cosmos now we've been going a thousand miles per hour bamboozled with this nasa chaos theory keep that panoramic view in your mind of the sun and moon both being above our lovely flat earth just like the ancestors showed us in this planetarium model right here keep that in mind and now we're gonna look at this same picture that we started with and i'm gonna show y'all again what i mean as i drive this thing home we just saw in the previous footage the panoramic view of the 
sun and the moon both above a flat earth but if you look at this model we started with that won't be possible like i said you can either see either or based on where you at with this model unless we move the earth down and have them both up above as you see in this next uh demonstration so this demonstration you see here show you what i'm talking about you will have to move the earth down in order for you to see the sun and moon both in the sky like that but that just wouldn't be scientifically feasible with this model that they give us people it wouldn't be all right not to mention these are just diagrams you gotta think mercury venus and all of that would be in between the earth right now so when you look at this diagram you gotta think about all that too mercury and venus and all of that is not even in here so imagine how difficult it'll be now if you throw those in there it's just a quick demonstration picture right here so you see it don't make sense people don't deny your senses because if you do that nothing don't make sense to you because you deny your senses so again in this demonstration here it just shows what it would be for that to be possible with the sun and moon as we see it but we know that ain't the case and that the earth is not a spirit and that our ancestors model does stand the test of time so yeah stand we ain't gonna no longer be nasa's fools because where NASA have lied and where NASA have always tried, the truth of the most high will never be denied. Now let's move on. So as I mm. wrap this thing up, think about the points I made. Think about everything I suggested. Look at this chaotic solar system model in front of you and tell me how can we have this perfect experience on this planet that we see. Now look at this pan view once again and look at how serene and peaceful that is above our flat earth. Okay, look at it. Look at how the the sun and moon are in this dance this yin yang dance what our ancient asian ancestors said and it's perfect balance all right our ancient ancestors knew what they was talking about people so we can't have this serene perfect balance that we experience in our reality if you look at this chaotic model that they teaching us in school that they've been giving us for centuries there's no way we they can experience the you. reality we experience it with this model each video i'm tearing guess. this thing up and i'm showing y'all how nasa is deceiving us so yeah your kids in school and they got to go and learn and lie and play the game but at least they'll know the truth at home all right because long as they don't know the truth the creator is being hidden from them so i'm gonna let y'all go i really appreciate y'all for tuning in and i do want to let y'all know that i really appreciate each and every last one of y'all i really do appreciate y'all okay and that's Thanks, the reason bro. i do it because this will keep me going knowing that people really want to know the truth because it can suck knowing all of this deception and knowing all of this stuff and you the only person know it okay that can kind of be a little lonely so to get people opening their eyes with you is like yeah man now y'all see the deception that we've been going under so yeah like i said i don't want to hold you too long i had to point this thing out because it's something people ask the question on all the time why do we see the sun and moon out together so if you look at this model in front of you just keep that in mind this is why you're on a flat earth and they both are doing a yin yang dance above you and i'm gonna sign off now and let y'all go new uploads every thursday peace and much love turn it up Sanchez TV, tune in. People 